Can you guys hear? Oh, there we go. All right, now you can hear it. Good morning. Wow, the room is packed. Actually, I think everybody's kind of just getting here and probably coming in and going to get some coffee. I do want to extend especially a welcome to our friends who are watching online. We hope that you are rested and uh, maybe you have a cup of coffee in your hand and you're ready to gather together in spirit and worship with us, so you are welcome. Check out um, underneath uh, the screen area, down on the information, you'll find the worship guide. And uh, we'll be, I think, starting in about five minutes or so. During, in the meantime, we do have a couple of questions. Today we're going to be talking about the things that matter. Um, so things that matter to you. And what does it mean to focus on those things? What does it mean to refocus on those kinds of things? So we have two questions we're going to put on the screen. What is, one is, excuse me, what are some things that really matter to you? And then the second one is, what percentage of your life do you spend engaging with those things? So these are the questions to consider. So we'll look forward to coming back in just a couple of minutes and worship.
Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning to our friends online and in person. Uh, we are so glad to be with you today. I'm Sarah, and I'm one of the members of this community and ministers on staff. And today, as we gather, we're centering around the theme of faith and what matters. We've been going through the book of James, and James, in so many ways, is a book of wisdom. And it's about what matters. And so today, as we sing and as we sit with different questions and hear invitations, uh, we invite you to continue with the questions we open with this morning. What matters to you? In the midst of a world where there are just so many things going on, what breaks open your heart? What do you care about? And how do we live our lives in such a way as to remain open and to then embody God's love in those spaces? So as we continue this morning, would you just pause and pray with me? God, we thank you for your love. And we thank you that when we lose the through lines of our own souls and what matters to us, that you meet us in those spaces. So God, even this morning, might you breathe in ways that are deep, that our souls can hear and be regrounded in what it means to be your people, to follow Jesus, and to love. It's in your name that we gather. Amen. So um, Andrew's going to read our passage for us from today, which is from the book of James. Again, a little bit of wisdom literature with a very soft, docile wording. All right, they're in for a surprise. Uh, this is from the book of James, chapter 4, verse 13, through chapter 5, verse 6. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a town and spend a year there doing business and making money. Yet you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wishes, we will live and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogance. All such boasting is evil. Anyone, then, who knows the right thing to do and fails to do it commits sin. Come now, you rich people. Weep and wail for the miseries that are coming to you. Your riches have rotted and your clothes are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have rusted and their rust will be evidence against you and it will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure during the last days. Listen, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in pleasure. You have nourished your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous one who does not resist you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Andrew. So that's the passage that grounds us in thinking about what matters. We'll talk more about that throughout the morning. Uh, but just a couple things. Uh, in case you've ever been in worship with us before, you may know that I don't ever stand here. Um, so this is the deal. Genevieve is sick, and so was like everybody else or couldn't be here. So what we're going to need you to do is I'm going to ask everybody, if you'd be willing for this first song especially, to stand up. And I know some of you know it. So you're going to have to sing loud so we can all sing together. And this first song, Stuck in the Middle with You, uh, it's, I think, a great song thinking about what matters and how we sometimes get stuck. So uh, I won't force you to stand up, but I will invite you strongly if you would stand up and sing with us. All right, we ready? Something ain't right I'm so scared in case I fall off my chair And I'm wondering how I'll get down the stairs Clowns to the left of me Jokers to the right Here I am stuck in the middle with you 
stuck in the middle with you And I'm wondering what it is I should do Hard to keep that smile from my face Losing control, yeah, I'm all over the place That's true Clowns to the left of me, jokers to the right Here I am, stuck in the middle with you Ain't up with nothing and you're proud that you're a self-made man And your friends, they all come crawling, slap you on the back and say Please of it all but I can see that it makes no sense at all is it cool to go and sleep on the floor cause I don't think I can take any more clowns to the left of me jokers to the right here we are stuck in the middle with you let's clap along with seasick Everybody, uh, we it's now time for God's garden, so you can grab a seat. And Jane, what are we gonna do now? Okay, kids in the back, can you come up and Hi, everybody. join us to sing goodbye? Where's Eliza? <laughs> Hi. <That's pretty. laughs> there they come. <laughs> Are you all excited to go to God's garden? I'm excited, but I'm staying here. <laughs> yeah, oh, they're coming. Yeah. <laughs> okay, man, whenever you're ready. <laughs> Should we do it? Are you ready? Is everybody ready to sing? Okay, here we go. garden gather round come without fear known by name here in god's garden all are welcome here are we gonna do it again come oh come come to the garden gather round come without fear known by name here in god's garden all are welcome here Round of applause for the band. Yay. Thank you. We did it, everybody. Okay. Okay, kids. So on the count of three, we're going to say hi, church. So one, two, three. Hi, and then church, on the count of three, say have fun, kids. So one, two, three. Have fun, kids. Okay, families, you can head out the back or out the side door.
Well, our breathe-in is, I feel like I like did costume change. <laughs> um, our breathe-in is the time in the service where really just to kind of deepen in and animate our inner lives to listen for God's spirit within our own spirits. Um, and what's the sense of invitation as we're sitting with this theme, what matters? And what does our faith invite us toward in the world? So some of you know this person in the <laughs> blue shirt and uh, olive green shorts with the black tennies and white socks. Yeah. That was just descriptive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is Bob, also known as Organic Bob. And many of you know that uh, Bob um, has been deeply formed by the earth and his mom's love for creation and, and then caring about creation. Right. And that matters to you. But yeah, there's actually... Deeply. Yeah. There's a lot of things that matter to you. Yeah. And you had an opportunity recently to bring together your love of gardening and caring for the earth and um, with some work in partnership with Sanctuary Church. Could you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, well, Steve Coleman from this church is uh, involved at Sanctuary in their Love Minneapolis project. And they, they're having trouble. They, they're located on the most violent intersection in the Twin Cities, and they share a parking lot with the liquor store. So the liquor store, people, the parking lot would fill up, and people would start drinking, and then there'd be violence. So they contacted me about getting some raised beds to fill up one long row of parking so people wouldn't tailgate there anymore. And then they had concrete planters around the parking lot for like traffic control um, they blocked off one of the two entrances. So the woman told me, uh, we set up the gardens, um, and I helped them locate these very inexpensive raised beds and how much soil to get and told them what book to get, you know, for beginning gardening. And they set them all up, and then somebody ran a couple of them over, and people from the neighborhood came and set it up. And so um, she contacted me, I need more beds. This is a battle we're fighting with plants. So it's the, the faith like that, you know, they're taking on the most violent intersection in the cities with plants. And, if, you know, if God's in the middle of that. I mean, God has to be in the middle of that, right? <laughs> so, and it was, it was really fun and rewarding. All I did was, you know, I, I crafted an email, told her how much soil where to get the, the boxes, and I delivered them, but they paid for them. And then they did all the planting and stuff, and that was the extent of my involvement. But with any giving that we do, God, God takes what we give, whether it's money, time, talent, he takes it and multiplies it. And there are times when I, you know, I'm really aware of this, and I put money in the collection plate, and I'm filled with this joy that God's duplicating my efforts and I'm working very closely with God. And that the intimacy I feel with God at that moment gives me just a little bit of a window into what heaven must be like. And so it makes it more fun. And, and anything that you're lacking in your life that you really want, whether it's friendships, relationships, you want to get rid of loneliness or financial stuff, Give that stuff away, and it will come back to you, because it gets magnified back also. So it's, it's been a life-changing experience for me, and I love being able to do the garden beds here, there, and Avivo, another partner of ours, has gotten some of these beds. So it's really been a blessing to be able to share this with people. Thanks so much for sharing with us. You know, and one of the things I love about what you're naming is, again, if anyone knows Bob, organic Bob, right? Like, and in the midst of a world in which sometimes, I think a lot of the time, the challenges that we're facing as a people are overwhelming, uh, daunting. <laughs> it can feel desperate or hopeless. How just like, you're like, okay, but here's the thing I can bring and I can do it in partnership with other people. Um, so just really appreciate you sharing that. And just wanted to, to have Bob share his story, knowing that for all of us, we have our unique passions and gifts and things of who we are. And what does it mean as we continue to show up in the places that it, it does matter? 
and uh, wanting to encourage that. So as we continue, there is, um, if you have either in front of you a guide for worship, if you're online, you can pull it up from the link, or on your tables, there's also a QR code. I just invite you in this next song uh, to just do some inner reflection about your own life and like what actually breaks you open. Because sometimes I think faith, we use it so that we don't have to move towards the world. It can be like, oh, I got Jesus, so I'm good. But what does it mean if God is actually also inviting us into the places that actually we don't know what to do, we feel deep grief, and how can we let that matter and impact how we show up? So uh, thanks so much for sharing. I don't want to feel better, I don't want to feel good, I want to feel it hurt like losing someone should, I'm gonna let my heart break, I'm gonna let it burn, I'm gonna stake my claim with the flame I know I've earned. Run, baby, run, don't you know I've tried But escape is a waste, ain't no use in hiding you You know the best way over's through So if it matters, let it matter If your heart's breaking, let it ache I Catch those pieces as they shatter I know your hurt is not in vain Don't hide yourself from the heart I heard today, hit tomorrow shatters let it matter let it matter Ooh. they say you know it ain't easy I wouldn't want it to be cause these is for the shallow but we are from the deep I don't know distractions Don't try to please me for one day Cause you, you are worth enjoying my love And you are worth this pain oh, Run baby run, don't you know I've tried But escape is a waste, ain't no use in hiding you You know the best way over's through So if it matters, let it matter If your heart's breaking, let it ache Catch those pieces as they shatter I know your hurt is not in vain Don't hide yourself from the horror I hurt today, hit tomorrow If it's fragile and it shatters Let it matter, let it matter Sleep is a waste, ain't no use in hiding you You know the best way over's through So if it matters, let it matter If your heart's breaking, let it ache And catch those pieces as they shatter Know your hurt is not in vain Don't hide yourself from the horror I hurt today, here tomorrow If it's fragile and it shatters let it matter, let it matter If it's fragile and it shatters Let it matter, let it matter
I really, oh. I love that song. If your heart's breaking, <laughs> let it shatter. All right. I know sometimes um, in view of how large things are in the world that I do personally um, find myself at various points being like, does it matter? Um, what do I do with how I'm feeling and what's undoing me in this space? You know, sometimes I think for my own self, I know that my view of history can be one that I thought it's like a constant progress history. Where, you know, like, as people go to school and folks get educated and then we have the internet and, like, we can actually interact with diverse stories. Like, of course, wouldn't you just want to love? And wouldn't we want to be more open to each other? And yeah, that absolutely can happen. And it also doesn't always. And this is where, and I paused on the historian in the room that I know of, there may be more of you, um, in that recognizing that the story of human history is filled with movement, right? The quote that's um, attributed, right, the, the moral arc of the universe, it bends towards justice, but it ain't all here yet. And within that, that sense of invitation of that it actually does matter. The moments we show up to love, to try again with courage, to have fallen off a wagon and come back again to a meeting, that it matters when we take those steps in our lives. To let ourselves be broken open and vulnerable and again, some of this is cliche, right? We've heard that, like, I might just be one light. But if each of us carry that together, it does matter. This book of James, in some ways, um, as we've been going through it, maybe if you've ever read it, you've been like, okay, this guy has, like, some real opinions about some things. True, very true. And sometimes I think we can read texts like this like a new moral directive in terms of do this, don't, th don't do this. And sometimes we turn off our own brains as we're engaging with it. And I wanted to invite us, as we're looking at this text from today, that actually part of what James is getting at is helping us to remember the through line of what matters. Acknowledging that, in my language, humans are going to human and that all of us sometimes lose the through line of what it means for us to believe in love and in the world, to follow with God in the, in the kingdom that God is about building in the world. And James, I think, is one of these folks who actually invites us back to remember when we've forgotten. The part that Andrew read for us, it starts in chapter 4. And, you know, it starts off by saying basically, hey, so you have all these plans, you're like, here's what I'm going to do, and the sense of you don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. And so instead, what does it mean that we live in view of God, seeking God's will in the world, et cetera? Now, maybe you didn't hear it like this, but I'll just acknowledge when I had heard this passage when I was younger, I was like, okay, so it's bad to have any plans. So for any of you who are strategic planners, you're just not as faithfully Christian as the rest of us, sorry. Some books are like, I hope she keeps going. Um, yes, I will. That's, that's some of how I heard it, and I didn't know what to do with the part of myself that I'm actually very future-oriented, and I, I like having plans. Now, my plans can change, but I like having them. It helps me to orient myself, to know where I'm going. But what I, I like about this reminder is it's not this like new law of, like, well, just don't ever think about the future at all. But that reminder of what happens when we get so caught and like, no, this is what is going to happen. And it will look exactly like this. And it will happen at exactly this time. And how in that we actually miss life. We miss people. We miss our own selves. Some of you may know that old um, Cat Stevens song about how the, the dad and his kid and the kids growing up. And then over time he keeps saying like, hey, I'll, I'll, I'll be with you later, son. We'll have a good time then. And then eventually the son grows up and says to the dad, yeah, well, we'll have a good time then because the son has also now become like his dad in just being so focused 
on his life and his career and all the things he had to do that he missed the relationships. And that's where, in so many ways, I think the, the book of James, it's like a New Testament book of wisdom. Okay, so in the Hebrew Bible, some of you may have read Proverbs before. Proverbs is a whole book all about what does it mean to be a wise person. And I think that's the similar echo in the book of James. It's about what does it mean, what does it look like to be wise? Well, isn't there wisdom for us in as James is reminding and inviting us to not get so locked into worry or fear or control or whatever our stuff is, because each of us orient differently, right? Some of us have fear, some control, some all sorts of things that are melded together. But to breathe and to open ourselves and our hands and ourselves to God, to the vulnerability we know is within us and in the world and to one another. And James reminds us of that. James continues from here as we begin chapter 5 and talks about, now in answer to the rich, weep and howl for miseries are coming to you. Your wealth is all rotting and your clothes are eaten up by moths. And he continues from there. As we know in our world sometimes, having conversations about the things that matter can become immediately polarized and we can't even talk to each other, right? Uh, so, for instance, I'm going to talk about an issue that's been controversial lately, right? Dealing with uh, abortion, pro-life, pro-choice. We've become so ensconced in camps that we can't talk about what matters, right? How do we talk about life? How do we talk about maternal health? How do we talk about ectopic pregnancies? How do we talk about God? How do we talk about valuing life? Like, how do we talk about these things? Can we actually have conversations about these things, or do we get so locked in that we don't know how to hear? So we come to passages then like James, and it's like, oh, Sarah probably cut and pasted that in the Bible, you know. <laughs> I didn't. Just you can go check any version you want. It's in, in James chapter 5, Right? And so we get defensive because, or we can, because it's like, oh no, what if, what if that means that I'm the bad guy in this story? And what if we sat with that a little bit more and sought wisdom in it? What's it telling us about what matters? Well, what happens, and what James is talking about, and he talks about this multiple times through the text, is when folks start saying, no, like all of the resources, they're all mine. I can do whatever I want with it. I can oppress people. I don't have to care, which is not a particularly Christian orientation to the world, right? And he's reminding and challenging folks and saying in the midst of the world in which they were living, this is the rules of how the world says what matters. Get as much as you can. Step on whomever you need to. Make sure the shareholders are happy, but who cares about your ethics? And James is saying that's not the way of faith. The way to be wise and the way to care about what matters is to be in alignment with God and to live with our hands open. For indeed, your gold and silver, I'm quoting James in verse 3, are corroding. And that same corrosion will be your own sentence. It will consume your flesh like fire. What I love about this passage, and as I was reading it, it made me think about the different ways each of us reach for strong identities where you've known what it is to be vulnerable and you don't particularly like that feeling. So whether it's through the ways in which we inhabit our gender, the ways that you approach your work, the ways you show up even as a parent, because I said so, which is a, is a feels fun. Um, I haven't tried it on Josie because Josie doesn't understand language yet fully. But we usually do that reach for the strong identities because we're actually feeling vulnerable. And that's actually what faith and wisdom invites us to, is to actually show up in authentic, vulnerable relationship to let ourselves be opened up. And in that way, to let real life permeate our own stories and the ways we show up with one another. It makes me think about how in Corinthians it says how God's light shines through the jars of clay like, we are earthen vessels, and sometimes we try to act like we're not. Just this last week, I was um, 
confronted by this in my own story because I never reach for strong identities and I do faith perfectly all the time. Um, what happened is that I was talking with one of my best friends on a walk and I realized that um, I was feeling really vulnerable in my relationship with Andy. <laughs> um, when Andy and I first met, I had already been in counseling for quite a long time. I was deconstructing my faith and I was like very you know, thoughtful about it and a little prideful about it. And, but it was like hard fought in my life, right? But I felt really good about it. And in our relationship, I've always been the work person. Like, I love work. I have always enjoyed working hard. I've always had goals, these sorts of things. And the majority of our relationship, um, Andy has been unfolding into himself. And recently, he started his marriage and family therapy practicum, uh, clinical fellowship. And he's, like, kind of obsessed, right? Like, he really loves his work. And he also is paid hourly, so he's, I appreciate trying to be a responsible member of our household. So he's doing that. He's like, I'm listening to him talk to our friends yesterday, and he's talking about how, you know, he really wants to work on emotionally focused therapy with people to help them check in with their bodies. And I'm sitting over there, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're really attractive. Like, it was just so lovely to hear him talking this way. And, um, and he and I hadn't been around each other, and I realized, like, I was like, I feel really insecure. Is he still going to like me? Because I've actually gotten a lot of safety out of the fact that I was the one who knew what I wanted to do. Who, you know, I, had the, I have these different ways I've shown up where I've been like, yeah, babe, I see this in you. And I'm like, you see it in yourself. Do you still need me? Right? And that touched something in me. So each of us in our own stories, I think, have reasons why We've learned to build up things that we think are going to keep us safe, as James is naming riches does. He says, no, that's not what matters. And indeed, he continues in this passage, talking about how even more so that um, folks who are in charge have stolen from the laborers and cheated them, and how their cries have reached up to God, and how that condemns them. I think about sometimes in view of what matters that I like to construct myself as the good person in the story. Like, right? Like, I, I love God. I'm a pretty decent human, et cetera. And I am a pretty decent human, right? <laughs> like, but that doesn't mean that I do it all right. It doesn't mean that I'm not harming people with how I live. Um, I remember uh, a couple years ago in a sermon I was using a shortcut to talk about uh, the Gottman theory of how relationships connect. And I named something about, like, it was kind of a tropic sort of like, oh, did these clothes make me look fat? And I got a note from someone who talked about how painful my sermon was for them. Because I used this kind of shortcut way uh, to actually reinscribe fat phobia. And I wasn't intending to do that, right? Like, well, I wasn't. <laughs> but I was using a shortcut, and I caused harm. And I could tell immediately, right? Part of me wanted to be like, no, like, like, but I didn't mean that. I was like trying to like actually deconstruct the thing. And I was like, I harmed you, right? And James is saying in these spaces, it's not that then any of us are outside of grace or like, there's the door, get out. You're, a la you know, you're the person over the laborers. You're unjust. You deserve nothing. Instead, God shows up and says, no, come further in. Like, let grace be for you and that love to open you anew to the world and to that vulnerability that there's actually enough room at this table for all of us. This isn't just a turning over the table for harm. It's an invitation that all of us can then be at the table and be human and be loved by God together. So thinking about this theme of what matters, a couple questions that I wanted to just keep before us and before you is going back to the original ones. What, what does matter to you? What breaks you open? What maybe do you feel overwhelmed about in our world right now? Okay. And then also... What might be some ways that in your own life that you eschew some of the vulnerability or the grief that those sorts of knowings open up, right? 
if I know the, the, the pain and suffering of the world, what if it undoes me? Well, it probably will. And yet we also live in a faith that reminds us about resurrection and that we don't do this alone. It's not any one of our responsibilities to save or fix the whole world, but it is our responsibility to love and to risk and to follow Jesus in that way. So what matters to you? What breaks you open? What do you care about? Where are places where you work actively to resist those knowings and that vulnerability? And where might God be inviting you into some, maybe just even a little bit of softening in to moving towards that space? Maybe it's building some gardens or making some food or showing up in a hard relationship, running for city council. <laughs> How can we be more human together and in that way animate the vision of what God wants this world to look like, where everyone knows that they are loved and at home and that God's justice and kingdom does indeed come. Let us be a church that seeks to be about what matters and that loves each other when we forget. Okay. Christian, will you come up and invite us in a little bit? Thank you, Sarah. You really, uh, I think, teed up um, kind of what we want to do here in this second half, the things that matter. All of us have things that matter. We just are not all the, always in touch with those things. Um, I'd like to uh, ask Matt, would you, would you mind putting up the, the question as I kind of unpack this? I just kind of want to layer on, really, um, with what Sarah was saying. I don't know, it was about four or five years ago, I was going through like a really difficult um, time that had to do both with personal and social grief, I guess you could say. And I thought like if I just put my intellectual power to work, I could, I could do something about this. And I did, I really, I did. I put my, I, I, I wrote something, doggone it. And I published it and I, I actually went out and recruited people and made them sign it. Um, and it was this thing, it was called the Boston Declaration. Um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to get emotional. No, 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 no. I need to have a day where I don't do that. Um, but my wife pulled me aside, I don't know, four months later or something, and she said, you're not yourself. And it was like, she said, you're being too sharp with your boys. That's not you. So I wound up uh, connecting with a therapist. And, and I, I share this story in part because of the question up there. Um, what do we do when we sort of come to realize that we've lost touch with the things that matter? Maybe it's a big thing. This one for me was a huge kind of thing, uh, actually, because I'd never been in therapy before. Or maybe it's just, you know, the day-to-day. -day. You know, maybe it's like, I, I love music. Uh, I don't think I'm a music head, but I love to listen to music. But there are just some days when I just have to turn the radio off completely and just drive in silence because I need to reconnect. Or maybe it's coming here on a Sunday morning or being involved with a group of friends or talking to someone who really matters in your life. That's what helps you recalibrate can be all kinds of different things. So I just share those stories in part to invite you in to consider the question, uh, which is up here, which obviously was written by a former academic. Uh, when you realize that perhaps you have lost focus on the things that matter, whether someone else spoke into your life or you realized it yourself, what kinds of things or practices do you do to regain your perspective and find your center again? So I want to invite you in for about four or five minutes.
to talk at your tables as you feel comfortable. We're going to get a little noodling up here, I think, and then we'll enter into the final part of our worship together. So since Genevieve can't be here today, I wanted to draw your attention in our worship guide to Genevieve's words about this song being a reminder to stay grounded and childlike as we take on the world. When it gets overwhelming, we have to remember the beauty of life and approach it and every person as they are children learning to walk, making mistakes, learning to love, figuring out what matters, in need of comfort and gentleness, when we can look at the world and ourselves through a gentle lens, we get one step closer to living a connected and awe-filled life. So from Genevieve, stay gentle, folks, especially when it's hard. Your heart on 
on your sleeve No to find joy in the darkness it's wise although they will think you are naive so don't let them lower your shoulders love them more while you try grow younger while you're growing older be amazed by the sky can the girl with the world in her hands the kingdom of heaven it belongs to a boy while his worry belongs to a man so friends stay gentle The most powerful thing you can do Oh, gentle, unbreakable you Can we give these guys a round of applause? And then, Sarah, you did double duty today. I think you definitely deserve a round of applause. Just to talk about vulnerability, I would rather preach 5,000 sermons. <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, that's right. You, 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 that. you were out there. You had the experience today of being vulnerable, right? Yep. Absolutely. And you... You were remarkable. Thank you. Okay, friends, uh, this is the end of the service. I have announcements for us. We have a lot going on this week. This is a very, turns out to be a very, very busy week. Very chill week. week. Yeah, mm -hmm. very, yeah, not chill, if you want things to do at least. Uh, I think I have like six different announcements. I feel so. kind of like we're on an into the night show. Yeah, this and is I can great. Be like, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Well, can I get like a, like a boom, boom, boom? Yeah, yeah that'd be great. Okay. There we go. All right. So first of all, uh, Backyard Barbecue, which is tonight at 6. At my house. At your why house. Not? You should just come over. I'll I make think, you food. And I think there's ten more, at least 10 more there's seats. There's at least 10 more spots. And if you come, yeah. we, whatever, we'll feed you. We'll find so if food. you got time and you're interested in just, these are good spaces and places for hanging out, getting to know yep. each other. You know, just come uh, as you are. Uh, at least 10 spots. Wednesday night, we have music in the courtyard. At six o'clock, we're gonna have. Uh, it looks like this is gonna be chorale performing ooh, ooh, ooh. classics, hymns, and community sing-alongs. You're be gonna want to be there. They always pull out some really great musical numbers, and and Paul Paul Rudoy will be he be leading. I think this is true. He'll be okay. there. Uh, dinner will also be provided that evening. Uh, then on Thursday, theology on tap. Um, do we have pictures of theology on tap? We did. That's what it looks like. Oh, yeah. there. That's oh, there we go. Awesome. Okay. We had, so this is our, this will be our third Theology on Tap. We had like 40 people at the second one. So let's keep going. Right? Yep. Let's keep building this thing. And, and uh, eventually we'll have our own pub here at the church. <laughs> this, uh, is, no. this is Christian's mission. So Man, that's he my subtly dream. says it randomly. I, I, yeah, I pray for this every week. Uh, seriously, though, Theology on Tap really is, it's, um, it's envisioned as a, a space of curiosity. So uh, bring your most curious self, your questions, and then being curious about one another. That's kind of the idea. So the questions are, I think, um, pretty straightforward. They're not overly... Uh, intellectual, might, we might say, like, they're not huge high bars. It's so like, if you're, what do you think about God? Right. It's like, what IPA do you think about God? What do you, about, you want to know about it? Yeah, there you go. Exactly. That's the part I remember You get to a lot. get a chance to enjoy some, some good beer or uh, also non-alcoholic drinks. Uh, so this week it will be at Bear Cave Brewing, which is in Hopkins. Uh, there is a uh, young adult Saints game uh, on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want more details on that, uh, please do check out the website. You can also talk to Nicole Smalley. 
Uh, she's sort of the lead organizing that. And I think I was just over yesterday in St. Paul at the Farmer's Market, which I think is right next to the Saints Field. What a great venue to watch a baseball game. It's so cool. Also, um, as an announce, kind of as a sort of um, FYI, if you, you know, pr are praying from time to time during the week, uh, this week is the half day uh, summer day camps that are going to be hosted here. Um, nine to noon, I believe, is the yep. actual time. But um, we just want to encourage you to be praying for our people who are overseeing the day camp. Pray for the campers. Pray for a spirit of welcome and love and uh, fellowship as these little kids uh, come on in here and, and uh, we get to love on them and minister to them and their families. Lastly, uh, you all may know, um, or maybe not, but uh, our community is going to be building a, a tiny house. We're going to be working on a tiny house this year like we did a couple years ago. The tiny house has already actually been delivered. Um, and so today we're going to have um, a kind of christening prayer service, which um, includes, as you need to have at every prayer and christening service, coffee and donuts. So outside, that outside. will be outside afterwards. So the normal coffee and donuts will be migrating outside and uh, we'll do a brief uh, prayer and blessing service. So, And you can also, if you haven't signed up yet to help, and it, if you're not able to even come in person, there's things you can sign up to help with. You can find that sign up um, outside or online. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And with that, uh, I want to wish you all a blessed Sunday and rest of your week. Go in peace, brothers and sisters. Amen.